All right, now let's look into uh, the next process, which is a little longer. And um, this process is called as the Krebs cycle, um, after the name of the biochemist who discovered this cycle. Um, the cycle will go in quickly and it will appear like it was um, made or discovered right away. It took them like two decades to come up with this whole process of this, uh, the Krebs cycle and all its different components of this cycle. Um, sometimes the cycle is also called as the citric acid cycle and the reason for that being that most of the intermediate in this uh, in the steps are carboxylic acids which are organic acids and that's why it's called as a citric acid cycle. Before I change the slide I want to make sure I remind you glycolysis took place in the cytoplasm, Glu glucose was, was broken down to pyruvate within the cytoplasm and then uh, there were um, pyruvate was uh, one product that was formed. Uh, the, the process released NADH and these are then going to enter uh, the Krebs cycle. Um, energy was required for this process. Uh, we used two ATPs to uh, start the reaction. At the end we got four ATPs. So the net gain is actually just two if it makes sense to you if you use two ATPs to start the reaction um, at the end of the reaction you you release four ATPs so the net gain for um, this process is just two a two ATPs so it's important to uh, account for ATPs uh, during your study when you're doing this entire uh, the steps so let's go on to the next step um, the Krebs cycle firstly takes place in the mitochondria. There are two regions in the mitochondria. One region is called as the matrix where the Krebs cycle will take place. So the citric acid cycle is sometimes called and uh, the other part um, of, of, the, of, the, or of the cycle which is the continuation part would take place in the membranes and which we, we call as the electron transport chain which are the membranes over here. So there are two parts of this, uh, uh, the, the two processes which are uh, aerobic because they both require oxygen are uh, taking place in the mitochondria. Um, the goal of this uh, process is to form ATP and um, carrier molecules of NADH2 and NADH. Now these two are um, your carrier molecules which will take electrons to a third part of this cycle or the last part which is called as the electron transport chain and um, there will be a series of, re of redox reactions going on within the um, within this uh, cycle and also at the end there are a lot more in the electron transport chain so this is a, a series of uh, reactions that are in a cyclic manner so it's not a one step process there are many intermediates in this process and we will explore each step slowly before pyruvate can enter the Krebs cycle, it needs to be converted into another molecule which is called as the acetyl-CoA. Acetyl-CoA is a two-carbon molecule and pyruvate, if you recall, was a three-carbon molecule. So if a three-carbon molecule converts into a two-carbon molecule, it must release one carbon out because you can't just magically disappear an element. This carbon that comes out eventually comes out as carbon dioxide. So here is the first carbon dioxide molecule that is released through the the process of respiration or the oxidation and in this this is the uh, carbon dioxide molecule along with the others that will be released will be then passed outside the cell into the blood bloodstream and they will eventually go to the lungs and they will eventually be exhaled. So here is pyruvate back a three carbon molecule and uh, it needs an enzyme which is called as the coenzyme A. Coenzyme A plus the pyruvate forms this complex which is called as the acetyl-CoA complex. Acetyl-CoA would have two carbons and the coenzyme A. So you can see the coenzyme A is just followed up here um, and release the carbon as carbon dioxide. Acetyl-CoA is, um, is the molecule that can then enter directly the 
the Krebs cycle. So before uh, uh, we go on to the Krebs cycle, pyruvate has to go through these uh, changes to the molecule and uh, get rid of the carbon and become into a two carbon compound. Now acetyl-CoA is a two carbon compound and it enters the, the cycle. As you can see over here, this is a cycle. It, why is it called a cycle? Because it literally repeats itself. It keeps on going over and over again. So it's in a cyclic form. Uh, Acetyl-CoA along with a four carbon molecule which is called as oxaloacetate forms a six carbon molecule. And in this, in this process, acetyl-CoA enters the cycle and releases the coenzyme A. So the coenzyme A was literally um, a carrier molecule. It, it took the, pyro, the two carbons from the pyruvate, um, anchored it to itself and then released it to the Krebs cycle. So it gets uh, reused, the coenzyme A can go back and pick up more of the, and work with more of the pyruvate. Now the six carbon compound goes into this uh, very furious, uh, uh, numerous stages. It forms key, ketoglutarate, then succinate, and then fumarate, and back to oxaloacetate. Notice on each of these stages, things are going in and coming out. The red arrows are all pointing to um, the step of NAD converting into NADH. So um, now I want you to think about it. Is it oxidation or reduction? What did we say earlier? Whenever you have, uh, if any, whenever NAD accepts two electrons plus a hydrogen, it is called as Think about it. What did we say? I give you some time to think about it. It is called as reduction. So NAD is now getting reduced in this process. It's getting reduced to um, because it's accepting the two electrons plus the hydrogen to form NADH. From um, the next step is it also releases one carbon dioxide. So another carbon dioxide is released at this step. So this is the second carbon dioxide molecule that we notice over here. So this is the second molecule. The first molecule was released in this previous step. This was the first molecule of carbon dioxide released here. Coming back to our second molecule. So where we release the carbon dioxide and then it now becomes a five carbon compound. This five carbon compound changes to another four carbon compound. So that means that it releases another carbon dioxide molecule, which is the third molecule of the carbon dioxide is now released. Also, uh, NAD is again reduced to NADH, which means more electrons are being released and um, NADH is gaining the hydrogen ion. Um, after, after this, you can see another interesting thing that happens over here is, the, is that you notice um, ATP is now being uh, formed. There, this is the only step that you see uh, a direct formation of ATP. ATP was not formed here. There were two steps in the glycolysis stage where you ATP is formed, but since then we have seen a lot of movement of NAD and NADH. NAD and NADHs are all your um, carrier molecules. So this is a carrier step. This is another carrier step. And we will notice that there's another carrier step over here. So all the green are your reduced reactions that I've pointed out. ATP is the only one ATP that is formed in this uh, process. Um, another change that happens is uh, besides the NADH, there is another carrier molecule and this is called as the FAD. FAD behaves the same way as NAD does and um, it, it has a similar behavior. It is also reduced to form FADH2 and it uh, passes the, the, the electrons by accepting it and takes the hydrogen away. So all of these uh, side uh, pieces that are going on is the production of either we're either getting ATP, which is just one step. Uh, we saw that if we count the carbon dioxide, there were two molecules of that. And if you count the NADH, how many NADHs we have? We have one over here, we have one over here, two, and three. So there were three NADH, and the last is we, we see an FADH forming, and that is at only at one step. So these are the four... Um, uh, substances that are being released um, through the cyclic process. Um, the carbon dioxide is really your waste. So these two molecules of carbon dioxide plus the third molecule um, gives you three total of carbon dioxide molecules. So perhaps I should write down over here. One carbon dioxide comes out uh, and during the preparation, preparatory stage. So that's one carbon dioxide during the preparatory 
preparatory stage. So that will total three carbon dioxide. Now, um, what, there was one glucose, which was six carbon, and that released two pyruvates, and each pyruvate was three carbon. So now you can see that um, there will be actually two of these cycles going around because each pyruvate is going to enter the cycle. So a total of uh, three times two, you will actually get six carbon dioxide molecules, um, two ATPs, six NADHs, two FADH out of the entire one glucose molecule. So here is our accountability again. Um, the input for the cycle required two ATP molecule. Keep in mind each ATP molecule, uh, sorry, um, two acetyl groups. Each acetyl group is um, is using um, uh, is working on the pyruvate, and uh, and that pyruvate is uh, is uh, transferring um, uh, its two carbon to the acetyl um, to the two carbon molecule that enters the Krebs cycle and it adds to the oxaloacetate. You get six NAD. Two FAD and two ATPs that were um, that were required um, in this process. Um, the output is you get four carbon dioxide. That is again only citric acid. If you add the the third one from the preparatory stage, you get six and NF FAD FAD and the two ATPs. So this accounts for all the products that are released from the Krebs cycle. Again, sit down and think about all that has happened so far. How did glucose enter and how did it come out? Uh, this part of the cycle, again, I'm repeating, it's taking place in the matrix of the Krebs cycle, which is the fluid part. And oxygen must be present. So when oxygen is present, uh, this uh, the cells will undergo this this step. Now the story doesn't end here. Um, all of these molecules that are that are, are released from the citric acid, which are all of these, are then going to uh, be accounted for, especially the two NAD and FAD in the next process. So let's look at the next uh, step.